All right, you guys, uh, how many of you actually have used Evite before? Or you have them in your inbox? I mean, wow, of course. So this is my uh, talk on Evite. So uh, this is who I am from uh, i-hack.com. Thanks, Paul. And the warning message. So you guys can read that, but pretty much what I'm going to say, I'm, I'm not here to screw over Evite, but be smart. Don't get arrested. Don't modify, change, alter evites that you don't own. Did you send evite and evite to tell them they were vulnerable? Oh yeah. I actually I spent a lot of time looking for their own like maybe like a invite that they were going to send out but I don't even think they use the the product. I'm not I'm not kidding. So, what we're going to get into the uh, background information on you know, the foundation of what we're going to attack. Um, we're going to impersonate some people, kill off those that you hate or love. We're going to invite God to a party. Set it and forget it, and you can read the rest. And here we go. So, 1998, Evite came out. And right now they claim that they have 25 million users. And I'm probably about 15% of those users, so all the accounts that I've created. <laughs> And also, they, they claim to send out 25,000 um, invites an hour. I mean, that's some serious stuff. So when I was doing my research, I did discover that uh, fundraising was a, a hot topic. Like, people love to use Evite for fundraising, reunions, and everyone's favorite, drinking. <laughs> so... Yeah, he's not here to, he would probably peg me with a schmoo ball if he was here, but. Yeah? You guys should go give this guy's crap later, buy a shirt or something from him. Um, so, why Evite? Well, back in 2006, uh, one of my friend's wife sent me an Evite, and you know when you get those emails where you're just kind of like pissed off some third party is sending you an email, and you're like, how the hell did they have my email? And what is this Evite? Why am I being invited to something? So I clicked on it, you know, and it was um, pretty interesting. I mean, I found some vulnerabilities back on uh, their 1.0 version. So I've actually been picking on Evite for some time. I just never told anyone because it just made the parties interesting, as you'll see in a little bit. So Evite's not a bad uh, site, but I uh, would also like to see the uh, site become fail or be secure. Out came this new version. This is the uh, 2.0, so to speak. And when, they, um, when I was talking to them about Evite, I'm like, hey, you got all these problems. They're like, uh, I'm like well, we have this new version. It's going to be great. You know, it'll probably fix all the stuff that you're talking about. I'm like, OK, whatever. We'll wait and see. And I was kind of sad because I had so much fun with the old version. I was worried they were really going to fix it, and I couldn't like, tamper with parties. So you're going to attack a web app. What do you do? You guys, any suggestions? Yes, yeah. nice, plug. nice plug. We'll look at the uh, invitations first. And, um, you know, this is like the basic on how to create a invitation. But right off the bat, cross-site scripting comes to life. And this is what was in version 1.0. So I'm guessing what they did is like, we love everything that's in 1.0. Let's import it into 2, and we'll bring all the vulnerabilities along with it. So that, I mean, that's kind of lame, but you could even uh, spice up the uh, invite and you know, do some image changing. But still, this stuff's not persistent, because when I send it out, nothing ever pops up. So I was kind of sad. So I just started to look at the actual invite itself. Like, this is what comes in your inbox. And uh, Chris Nickerson was nice enough to uh, loan me his uh, invitation. And I just want to point out one thing just to keep in the back of your mind. This link right here is kind of like their short code. This is what they used to get you to your invite. I don't know why they do that, but this is what they did. So just keep that in the back of your mind because we're going to pick on this in a little bit later. So up pops the invite. I've actually removed some of the information just for your safety because if you show up at Chris's house, he'll probably shoot you or have his friends shoot you or release some dogs. And what's that? 
Yeah, probably. So looking at the invite, if we take a little closer look, we have an EID and a GID, both of 30 characters. And just to review real quick, event ID equals EID and guest ID is a GID. Like, I don't, that's just how they did it. But what if I told you we didn't even need this um, guest ID? Because this is actually how they do their security or their encryption or whatever you want to call it on their uh, site. So if we get rid of that and we just sign in with the event ID, we'll see that it thinks that we're the admin. So it's like, well, you should have a password for this to log in. So that kind of sucked, but they uh, did a really good job. They uh, gave up their security and gave it to this company. <laughs> and then they decided, like, well, this company's so awesome. Let's give them a skeleton key. And then we'll just make GID equals FB, which is lowercase. Bam, we're back into the site. So any EID that you find and you want to go look on the internet for, you add GID equals Facebook, like FB, and you're in the invite. So, so moving on. Like, I, I just, I'm just shocked on why they, uh, they ended up doing that. So out came... Um, this great application called Chrome. Chrome has superpowers. I'm not, I'm not kidding, it actually does. It has this like x-ray tool, that I, that's what I call it. Because when you build a site, this like builds on the fly every time that you come to the site. So if we actually x-ray what's happening in the background and we use Chrome, it's got this option where you can right click and go inspect element. You can bring this tool up and like type an at sign and you know, emails are coming up. So everyone's email is actually embedded in this. So scammer or like spammers and everyone else that like loves emails, they're just gonna have a heyday with this, but I'm not a spammer, so I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna attack something else. So doing more research, I discovered this uh, little tool on their own site, on the old version, as you can see. There's the uh, URL. It tells you what people are searching for. And the uh, interesting thing is that people type their email in here for some reason. Like, that's, they're like, oh, I'm going to search for my email. Maybe I can find my old invite. I don't know why. They even type their password. It just scrolls up in here. Like, this guy's like searching for sushi or whatever. So anything that you're searching on Evite shows up in this window. And I actually went to Evite. And I'm like, what is this? And they're like, I have no idea. Where did you get this? I'm like, I'd Google. And they're like, okay, whatever. And they never told me what this is for. They, I don't think they know. So when I was looking at that, I'm like, well, why don't I just attack the users? Because, I mean, I, I mean, that's what I ended up seeing, all this user data just scrolling across. I'm like, well, I'll start attacking the users. So in my uh, inbox, I actually have a wedding invitation. And uh, being that the sneaky person that I am, and, you know, do some, like, little security ninja stuff, I decided I wanted to look at this invite without being able like, to send my cookies that says, like, hey, Trent, check this invite. So we just fire up wget and dash dash max redirect zero, and lo and behold, it tells me the uh, event ID. And dropping out the GID with Facebook, you know, we can look, just look at the invite with kind of like anonymous. So up pops the invite. From what you can see right here is like you see the guest list of what's happening and the comments. So naturally, I will go ahead and pull up to see if I can find emails, but I don't find any. So it turns out that when you're importing a book of all your friends, you can go back in and give them names. So instead of like John at Gmail, you can give John, like, just John instead. So that's what this person ended up doing. So I was like, that, that kind of sucked. But what if we search for GIDs? Those show up too. And GIDs actually equals user IDs. So when you log in, that GID, you can start to assume people, you know, and uh, attack them. So 
public versus private. There is two types of invites. This one being a public invite. As you can see here, we can see comments and great stuff like that. When we switch over into a private inv invitation, which we met with like the bachelor party would be private probably, um, it would not show you who's invited and not show you the comments. So those are like kind of the two types of invites that you can have, either public or private. So with that said, we'll begin to look at some more uh, information on the actual invite. So there is a, um, I call them plugins. They're called events, plugins, guests, and messagings, and users. These plugins, you can actually talk to Evite and ask them questions. And Evite security is so awesome, it doesn't authenticate you. They'll just be like, you know, what if we wanted to find the event about who's being invited? So I can ask in Evite, like, slash events, and then put in the event ID, and all you can see the other, you guys can read. So um, you can type in the event ID, and out will pop back information about the guest list or who's coming. We can actually even remove users from the party without them knowing. You, you can even remove the host. So like if you're having a party, you can just go in there and like, <laughs> I hate this party, I'm going to delete the host. The host is gone. Event, like probably in like 20 minutes, if the host actually tried to get back into his invite, it's missing. It's just not even on the screen. If they even have the email that they, the evite sends you, like thanks for sending an evite, it will actually show you as you're not invited. Like the host is like, what? <laughs> like how did that happen? And uh, messaging is also awesome because we can just add names. Like if I wanted to add whoever, I can just tell evite, you know what? My GID is false. And Evite's like, OK, you don't have a GID, but your name is this, and this is the message that you want to post on the invite. Bam, it lets you do that. Um, some other cool things. So send update, does that mean you can just keep hitting that? It'll keep sending updates to everyone who's invited? Yes, so the, um, the, he was talking about the email version. So you can actually email everyone on the uh, guest list, too, without the host. You can like leave the hosts. GID off and then give it a message and just like, oh yeah, by the way, this party has been canceled or whatever. So I just wanted to go through that first so you guys have a better idea of what's going to be happening here as we watch this. So in, the, in this one, I'm just going to look at the, uh, the details. So we're going to ask Evite the details of the event. This is what Evite actually answers back when you ask them about a certain EID. It just gives you a, like, oh yeah, well here's all the information. You can search through it and do whatever you want. So zooming in, we can look at stuff like IDs. So we'll just type in ID. And sure enough, there's a GID. Or maybe you want to search for emails. You know how I told you earlier that you can go in and change those usernames to be uh, actual names? This doesn't matter. You, it, any invite that you find now, you can dump out the entire guest list. I've seen guest lists of like a thousand friends. I don't even have a thousand friends, but some people have <laughs> invites with a thousand friends in them, and it's just mind-blowing. It I'm just, just shocks me. So all that user information, you know, GIDs and emails, they do equal win. So we're going to we'll start having some fun here. So if we, wanna, if we look at the verse of this of a private invite, oh, actually, no, I'm going to show you some cool trick. I forgot about this. The uh, Jason Lent website, you can paste that information in here, like so, and click Validate. And it will parse it out really nice for you. So now we can see like the host, the message that they're sending, the you know, like user IDs. Um, they're right there. We're actually seeing who's invited. Just, just awesome. A great thing right here, it actually shows you the options that you can check for an actual invite. So it can be either on, off, uh, 